Hi friends, welcome to Happy Nursing. This is Ila. Uh, in our previous video, we have discussed about the different nursing theories. Now from today, we will start discussing what is health, what is illness and about different health models. See, we are all nurses, right? So we have to understand the patient's needs properly before giving them proper care. In order to do that, we have to understand the concept of health and the concept of illness first. What is health? and what is illness what is the difference between health and illness okay so in our today's video we will discuss about the concept of health and concept of illness what is health is eating and drinking good called health is being happy always called health so what is health and what is the difference between health and illness what are the signs which will help us to recognize illness in a patient Today we will uh, discuss about what is health, what is illness and uh, about one of the health model called the health belief model. Okay, let's get started. WHO has defined health as a state of complete physical, mental and social well-being, not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. We should be physically, mentally and socially healthy. We have discussed this aspect several times before, so I am not going into details. There should be no physical problem pain or any other kind of symptom. We should be mentally sound. We should have a positive self-image for ourselves in our mind. And we should be able to cope with the daily life stress. Socially, we should be adjustable to the environment we live in, have good relation within the society and maintain balance between the different roles we play. It is not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. It's not that I don't have any disease or impairment so I am healthy. Maybe I don't have any disease, but I have a headache which comes and goes every day or I am not able to cope with the daily issues of my life. I snap out frequently or I have antisocial behavior. I cannot adjust in any environment. Then I will not be considered as healthy. Now what is illness? Illness is a state in which a person's physical, emotional, intellectual, social, developmental or spiritual functioning is diminished. As I said just now, we cannot see health from an individual aspect. Illness is also the same. When we are deviated from our normal level of functioning, be it physical, mental, social or any other mentioned aspects, it is considered to be an illness. Illness can be of two types, acute and chronic. Acute illness occurs suddenly, remains for a short duration but has severe symptoms, whereas chronic illness once occurred persists for a long time. There are different risk factors contributing to an illness like genetic and physiological factors. Genetic factor is a well-known cause behind a disease. For example, mother or father being thalassemia trait carry a risk of transferring the disease to their child. Physiological factors are those related to different physiological conditions. For example, some pregnant mothers have the risk of suffering from gestational anemia, diabetes or hypertension. That is due to their pregnancy. After their delivery is over, they generally regain their previous health. Age is a risk factor for various diseases. For example, those above the age of 40 are more susceptible to cardiovascular diseases. Environment. This is also an important risk factor. For example, those who live in a dirty environment without proper lighting and ventilation are susceptible to diseases like tuberculosis and many other diseases. Next is lifestyle. The way we live our life, engage in daily activities also is a risk factor. For example, those who are daily working on computers for several hours are in a risk for cervical spondylosis. So these are the risk factors of illness. Now there are different health models which are developed to understand the client's perception about health. How do they understand or how do they perceive their health? Health belief model is one of them. It addresses the relationship between a person's beliefs about his health and his behavior. It helps the nurses to understand patients' responses to symptoms and their degree of compliance with medical treatments. First I will show you the model. It will be easier for you to understand. The model looks like this. It has individual perception under which we have perceived susceptibility and perceived severity. Then it has modifying factors and then it has likelihood of action. 
Now susceptibility means the risk of getting a disease. How does an individual become conscious of the risk of a specific disease that is likely to affect him? For example, when COVID breakdown occurred, we all knew that we are susceptible to the disease. Now we had different perceptions regarding that. Some believed it to be a myth, it cannot happen. Some believed it to be real. That is individual perception of susceptibility. Next is perceived severity. There is a point when we actually understood the severity of the disease, right? For example, when we saw our relatives suffering from the disease or any close one passing away due to the disease. This also differs from person to person. How? Through the modifying factors. The modifying factors include demographics like age, sex, race, ethnicity, etc. And socio-psychological variables like personality, social class, peer and reference group pressure, etc. For example, in the beginning, the younger aged were more carefree regarding the disease. They were doing parties and all, going out in a crowd, etc. And the middle aged with a family were more afraid. Again, some of the aged people were so scared of COVID, they stopped going out. Some were carefree like the younger ones. This is just an example. Obviously, there were exceptions. This was the example regarding age. The perceptions differed according to sex, race, ethnicity also. Now coming to the socio-psychological variables. Personality is a very important factor. Not only in the case of COVID, but other diseases also. We have often seen that person who is never afraid of any symptom, doesn't care to visit a doctor. And we have also seen people who are very, very alarmed or even a, um, for, for even a trivial symptom. So perceptions depend on personality. It also depends on social class. Those who are from socially backward classes, don't have proper knowledge, are generally less perceived about the seriousness of any disease. Our perceptions also depend on the pressure or influence from our peer groups. For example, um, our family and friends trying to convince us about taking the disease seriously. All of this lead to perceive the threats of a disease, which makes us take certain steps to prevent the same. There are some cues to action like mass media, campaign, advice from others, illness of a known person or everyday news about the disease statistics, which also help us to understand the threat of the disease. Next comes the likelihood of action. As I said just now, we take steps to prevent or curb the disease. Now when will we be able to take those steps? Firstly, when we perceive the threat of the disease, as I said just now, and secondly, when we eliminate our perceived barriers to prevention and accept the perceived benefits. For example, we know that fast foods can cause cholesterol levels to rise and ultimately heart disease. We have also seen it affecting our relatives and we are reading in newspapers, seeing awareness campaigns, uh, being warned by our relatives repeatedly. So we have perceived the susceptibility, severity and the threat of the disease. Now our action should be to avoid fast foods because we have already understood the benefits of that. What is the benefit? We don't have to suffer like those who are suffering from heart diseases. We can lead a healthy life. We don't have to face other crises uh, which comes with a disease. These are the benefits. But there are also some barriers which we perceive. That is our preference of fast food. We know it's better to stop taking them, but they are so tasty. We just cannot. So that is our perceived barrier. When we eliminate those barriers from the perceived benefits, then we are in a position of taking the preventive health action. That's all about the health belief model. Okay. So today we have discussed about health and illness, risk factors of illness and the health belief model. If you like this video, like and share this video and subscribe my channel. See you in the next video with other health models. Thank you for watching.